everyone. Welcome to the White Mountain Endurance Podcast. This is something new that we are starting up this year. We're already mid-season into White Mountain Endurance's race calendar for the year, and we wanted to have a place that we could discuss happenings in the Northeast, especially things happening with White Mountain Endurance, but also just in general, talk about the community, the athletes, what's going on with the scene, and so that's why we wanted to launch this. So where you'll be able to find this is on the Air Viper Running YouTube channel, and we'll also have it out on podcasting platforms, so stay tuned for all of those. This is the first episode, so welcome. You guys are early if you're listening or watching this, and wanted to introduce, I guess myself, Jamil Curry, founder of Air Viper Running, and also our main host for the White Mountain Endurance Podcast, Patrick Karen. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing well, yeah. Really excited for the kickoff of the pod. Um, yeah, it's been a long time coming, I feel like. And uh, yeah, lots to lots to chat about, all things White Mountain Endurance. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Patrick, do you want to give a little overview of yourself, where you live, and your background in the sport? You've been at it a long time, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so old, Jamil. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I've been uh, involved, I guess, in the trail and ultra space for the last uh, uh, close to 10 years. Um, and as a started as a teenager and fell in love with uh, the community. Um, I grew up in the Boston area. Um, and, and yeah, I've always called the Northeast and New England, my home. Um, I currently uh, sort of go back and forth between Massachusetts and Maine uh, with also a fair amount of trips to New Hampshire. So um, yeah, I just really love what we have here, the trails as well as the people. Um, And I sort of dabble in a bunch of everything. So um, sort of the ultras are, I guess, my, my true love, but I like to mix it up on the short stuff as well, um, dabble in roads. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited, I guess, to see White Mountain Endurance sort of develop here in the Northeast and the events that we're putting together. That's awesome. And Patrick does run our social media for White Mountain Endurance. So if you are DMing us or reaching out, sharing what's going on with the scene, Patrick will be, uh, behind all of that stuff going out this year. Been exposed. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's me. So, yeah, I'll be at most of the events helping with some live coverage um, as well as some uh, post-race production as well. Um, but, yeah, I guess let's go right into the 2024 schedule. Um, so earlier this month... Uh, we had our first race of the season, White Lake Ultras, um, which was super fun. I'd never been before. Um, it's a really beautiful spot um, in White Lake State Park. Um, just a really nice two-ish uh, mile loop around the lake. Uh, beautiful single track and has a 24-hour, a 12-hour, and a 6-hour. Um, it was an all-weekend-long party. Um, and that was our, yeah, first event of the season and, uh, maybe sort of, uh, an outlier to the other ones in that it's a pretty, pretty flat course. Um, when the rest of our, our calendar get, gets a lot steeper. Um, so just, uh, upcoming this weekend, we've got Chakura mountain race, uh, on June 1st and 23K. Um, and that's one of the events that's been around uh one of the early white mountain endurance races um and kind of one of the fan favorites i would say for sure um always sells out um and yeah this year sold out a few months early um got a really great field 250 runners uh who are eager to uh, run up to the summit of Chakura. Um, and yeah, later in the month of June, we've got Race the Cog. That's one of our newer events. Um, uh, none other than Mount Washington. Um, the hard the highest way. summit in the Northeast. The hard way, yeah. No no road running. 
Um, so yeah, we uh, hosted a week after the Mount Washington Road Race, and we've got the just the the single um, summit climb, which is just under three miles, um, two point seven five miles, uh, and squeeze all, all the vert <laughs> you can into those three miles. And what's really unique is your uh, running alongside the Cog Railway that makes its way up to the summit. Um, and we've got three different sort of waves, elite, intermediate, and chill. Um, so, yeah, something for everyone there. And new this year, which I'm really excited to uh, spectate, is the Devil's Shingle Round Tripper. Um, so that is racing up and then racing down the mountain, um, so I think Joe Gray has our uh, men's record going up in around 39 minutes, and Amber Ferrara has our women's course record in about 50 minutes. Um, and I I don't know. I feel like they could cut that time in half going down. It'll be really cool to see. Um, so, yeah, that's the Devil Shingle Round Tripper uh, on June 23rd. Uh, race the cog um and then in july july 19th we've got the jigger johnson ultras uh the infamous jigger johnson ultras with our uh 100 miler probably one of the hardest hundreds in the country um as well as a 50 mile distance and then new this year a 20 mile distance uh, and we'll get more into that in a bit of why we added the 20 miler um I don't know if you have any thoughts on Jigger Johnson that you want to add, Jamil. Yeah, I mean, it's not just the climbing, but it's the terrain and just the whole challenge of it. I mean, it's remote sections over really tough technical terrain and long, you know, there's like a long time between aid stations as well. The aid stations are basically at the bottom. Um, so you've got to like climb a mountain in between every aid station, at least one, and... If you haven't yet seen the Every Mile Earned film we put out last year of the inaugural 100, go check it out. It's inspiring. And we we have just a couple spots left in the 100 miler. It's um, as it goes with a lot of the events in the Northeast, like they are capped at somewhat lower levels, at least for these White Mountain races, than maybe some other races out West or other parts of the East Coast. So spots are limited. Um, the 50 miler is already sold out. So if you're, if you're thinking about it, you might want to jump on, jump on that. Yeah. Pretty excited for that one. Um, and then yeah, brand new event on the calendar, uh, in August, August 17th is the bald face scramble. So that takes us to a little bit different section, um, of the whites right on the border with Maine. Um, and we've got a 14K and 29K there. And I'd say it's a similar sort of vibe to uh, Chakura. Um, what's cool with bald face is there's a lot of really, like, exposed sort of granite granite ledges. Um, and, you know, if it's wet, they can be a little, a little dicey, a little slippery. But they also are sort of conducive to pretty fast running, especially on the downhill. Um so that'll be a fun race in August. And then the calendar rounds out with Kilkenny Ridge Race, uh, September 14th. Uh, and we've got our 50 miler, our 25 miler, and new this year, the 25K. Um, and yeah, Kilkenny is also, yeah, just a really iconic sort of ridge line traverse. Um, and yeah, we'll get in now, I guess, to the White Mountain Endurance Cup, which uh, is a very exciting new new uh, addition to White Mountain Endurance. Uh, we are bringing a series of uh, sub-ultra distance mountain courses, putting them all together and creating a, a, a cup competition out of it. Um, and so I mentioned some of our races have several new distances um, so we've got in the cup, Chakura, uh, kicking off the cup with the 23 K Jigger Johnson, the 20 miler, bald face scramble, 29 K and Kilkenny Ridge, 25 K. Um, and this cup, uh, is open to all. So 
it's a participation based uh, series where if you compete in at least three of the four events, then that counts towards your completion of the cup um, and you'll register for each race individually. Um, and we're also, uh, so yeah, any, anyone who completes the series will be awarded a commemorative uh, White Mountain Endurance Cup medal. Um, but also for our, our podium finishers in the series who uh, have the combined highest number of points, um, they'll be getting a uh, sweet a, um, prize package from Adidas Terex, who we're really excited to partner with this year as the presenting sponsor of the Cup. Um, and then for our, our winners, our king and queen of the whites, um, not only do they uh, walk away with bragging rights as king and queen of the White Mountain Endurance Cup, but they'll also be getting an invitation to join the Air Viper Northeast Racing Team for uh, 2025. So we're already seeing a lot of uh, interest in the Cup. I, I've been enjoying seeing, looking through Ultra Sign Up and seeing uh, people commit to multiple events in the series. Um, yeah, Jamil, what uh, I know this was an idea of yours as well as some others. Um, yeah, what, what are your thoughts around the cup? Yeah, I think it's exciting. Um, we have Chakura. It's kind of, this is, idea kind of came out of Chakura and kind of how iconic that event has become and wanting to add that element to some of these other events, which have like a great foundation with Jigger and, and Kilkenny. Um, but to add something... Uh, that's a little bit shorter, could be a little bit maybe higher intensity for some of those at the front, but it's really for, for anyone to take part and see some different areas and kind of get that shorter distance mountain racing effect um, across the whole summer and kind of tie it together in, a, in one cohesive series. So really excited to kick this thing off this weekend and get it underway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Diaz Terex will be joining us at all um, of the events in the series. Um, so definitely uh, pay them a visit when you're there. Check out their shoes um, and their gear. Um, so now we're just going to go right into, I guess, previewing uh, this weekend's upcoming event. Um, yeah, I, I'm super pumped uh, to get into this. Um so Chikurwa has been around uh, the race since 2018, uh, definitely one of the OG White Mountain Endurance events, um, and just like true classic sort of Northeast style mountain running. Um, it takes place in Tamworth, New Hampshire, which is actually uh, same town as where we host White Lake Ultras, and you can actually see the summit of Chikura from the beach, which is pretty cool, as long as it's a clear day. Um, and yeah, a little intimidating to be like, oh wow, we're going to be running up that bad boy. Um, but yeah, it has, has a whole mix of weather throughout the years that um, we've hosted it there. So some years you get really uh, just open views of the white mountains um sometimes you feel like you're running up on clouds uh with this really cool undercast and in other years like last year you can't see anything you're just totally socked in um and, and yeah you're worried that you're gonna fall off the edge of the mountain <laughs> um so a whole mix um and that definitely affects sort of the yeah just the style of racing and the times um, that happen. Uh, and yeah, I will sort of go right into the course. Um, I actually have not, uh, I've run up the mountain several times myself, but I've never run the race. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to experience the race course, uh, on a coverage side this weekend, chasing runners around, um, we're lucky to be able to start the race um, in a field on, on Scott's Road that's uh, some private property. Um, and from there, we sort of get right onto some single track on Hammond Trail um, and immediately get right into the climbing of the race. Um, so the total, total distance, uh, as we mentioned earlier, 20, 23K, so right around 14 miles. Um, and right out of the bat in the first three miles, you're climbing around 2,000 feet. 
Um, so yeah, it, it hits you hard. <laughs> um, and Sora tricks you because you go about three quarters of the way up to the summit and then you actually descend all the way back to the base. Um, so you turn, you turn left uh, on the Liberty Junction Trail and yeah, you descend about 1600 feet to the aid station around six miles. Um, and from there, that's your one chance to regroup, refuel, uh, and then you're headed back up the mountain all the way to the summit. Um, so you'll take the, the Bowles Trail to the Brook Trail and then climb all the way to the West Side Trail uh, of Chakura. And from right around there, there's this little sort of summit loop um, that you do um, to tag the summit, uh, which is right around 10 miles into the race. Um, and that climb from the aid station to the summit is around 2,500 feet. Uh, so yeah, another, another big bout of climbing. Um, and then, then the fun part comes, uh, well, you know, climbing's fun too, but, uh, I, I love the descents. So from there you descend the last four ish miles and 2,800 feet right back to the start. Um, and yeah, th this trail has all sorts of features. It's super rocky, rooty, bouldery. You've got ledges, you've got stream crossings, um, and yeah, it's got sort of a mix of everything, um, but caters to some really fun, fun mountain running. Um, yeah, so that's sort of a, an overview of the course, um, and yeah, there's a great video recapping last year's race that we have on the race website um, that is a nice little preview of, of what's to come for this weekend as well. If you've never been out. Sounds there. like we're going to have some better views this weekend. I think it's mostly sunny. So uh, hopefully we get some iconic shots from the top this year. It was a little socked in, like you said last year, you couldn't really see a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely looking, looking good for this weekend. Maybe, maybe a little hot for runners, but uh, yeah, it'll be worth it for the views. Definitely. <laughs> Um, yeah, and kind of diving into the next thing, uh, we're going to preview some of our top contenders for this weekend, uh, being part of the White Mountain Endurance Cup, we thought it'd be fun to dive into some of, uh, both the series contenders, but also just the overall, uh, field, uh, both on the men's and women's side, and just a brief mention about our, our course records, there have been some sort of course variations throughout the years. Um, you know, in 2018, the course uh, was actually uh, a bit longer of a course, but more runnable terrain. So a lot, or yeah, a little bit less climbing. So um, th those maybe course records have, have a bit of an asterisk to them. Um, but our, our women's course record uh, from 2019 is 227. 17 by Jess Marion. Um, for those in the Northeast area, you might recognize her name. She has uh, one of the fastest times on the popular Pemi Loop as well as the Presidential Traverse. Um, and yeah, that, that record has held strong uh, for, yeah, going on five years. Um, and our men's course record is Tristan Williams, uh, also from 2019, 215 42. Um, there have been people who have gotten pretty close over the years, uh, but yeah, it's, it's still intact at 215.42. And Tristan's maybe a little less uh, known of a name, uh, but also a real crusher in the Northeast scene. Uh, I've been able to meet him at some events, and there's actually a pretty cool Trail Runner magazine article written about him called The Fastest Trail Runner You've Never Heard Of. Um, and yeah, he's just a really, really awesome guy. Um, I'd love, love to try to get him back to the race one day. Um, but yeah, that, that was our course records. Um, so we'll be keeping an eye out for whether those will go down this weekend. And, uh, with the field we have, I definitely could see, uh, see some records being broken. Um, so like we yeah, gotta, I think we'll dive right. We in. might have a good chance oh, yeah. of seeing some more sub threes by the women. I think we've only had four in the history of the race. Do you think that we'll likely see some dip under that three hour mark? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll, 
will uh, share some of the names shortly, but there, there's quite a few uh, fast ladies in the field this year. Um, and I think, you know, the deeper the field, the more, more people to help push you. Um, and with the weather conditions, I think it'll be fairly dry on the course. So I think that'll suit some quicker times as long as the heat doesn't affect people too much. Um, but yeah, the, when it's wet, it can definitely slow things down quite a bit. Um, just cause those, those rocks get really sketchy. Um, so I think the downhill could be a lot faster this year. Um, especially, yeah, just with, It'll be interesting to see how close the field is at the summit at, at 10 miles. Um, I, I imagine it'll still be a tight race at that point. So that, that last uh, reckless downhill is going to be exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess we'll dive into, I sort of organized our, our uh, top contenders uh, on both the men's and women's into our top returning runners as well as uh, new runners to watch. And uh, these are people who I see sort of being in that top 10 uh, range. Um, so on the women's side, we have a little bit less returning women. Um, but Addie, Adeline Caselli, uh, was seventh place last year. She also was the winner of our Jigger Johnson 100K last year. So uh, super strong across all distances. So she'll be back this year looking to improve upon her seventh place finish. Um, and then Kate Ryan uh, recently joined the field. She was eighth place last year, and I know is excited to come back to the event um, and improve upon her, her eighth place finish. Um, and then, yeah, a whole host of new women who are joining us at the event. Some who have raced uh, in past years, but not, not last year. Um, and then some who are entirely new to the race. Um, sort of headlining the field. I'm really excited to uh, have Caitlin Patterson joining uh, Chakura this weekend. Uh, she, yeah, two-time Olympic cross-country skier, um, just super, super strong all-around athlete, um, and yeah, multi-time national champion in cross-country skiing, but also a real crusher on on mountain races, who's done really well at uh, some of the USATF Mountain Championships, uh, done well at Loon, Cranmore, some of the, the races in the region. And she also won the Xterra Trail Run World Championships last uh, fall in Sugarloaf, Maine. Um, so this will be her first time racing Chakura. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're hoping to loop her in for the whole, uh, the whole cup. <laughs> um, and then Lindsay... Uh, Lindsay Weigel from uh, who's actually a member of our Northeast Air Viper racing team. Uh, this will be her first time racing Takura. Uh, she's actually committed to the whole cup, which is really exciting. Uh, and yeah, Lindsay is just a, a great uh, strong runner in the, the New England and uh, from the New Hampshire uh, region. And then Abby Bennett, um, she was fifth at Chikurwa in 2023 and eighth in 2021, so uh, improving over the years, and also was uh, fourth at last year's Race the Cog, um, so has a lot of experience at uh, White Mountain Endurance events, and she also just had a, a really strong third place finish at last month's uh, Vermont Overland Trail Race, which is another popular event in the region. Um, and yeah, I think she'll definitely be a podium contender for, for this weekend. Um, and then some of the other names, um, Bridget Smith Franey, um, another strong runner, uh, in the region who's had some strong events at, uh, both Firebird and Big Brad Ultras in Maine, Anna Ma Mangum, um, she was third at this month's White Lake Ultra Six Hour, um, and I know she's interested in doing some more of the, the Cup Series, um, Catherine Denny, who looks like maybe has been on a hiatus from, from racing recently, but has some really strong results at races in Colorado. Um, I'm not sure if she's new uh, to the New England region or not, but really excited what she'll do on, on uh, this course. Um, Kaylin Ramsey, who was our second place finisher at the Kenny Ridge race 25 miler last year. Um, 
Elizabeth Fay, who was fifth at Kilkenny, 25 miler last year. Caitlin Mack uh, Guthrie, who was sixth at Jakurwa back in 2021. Brianna Horgan, who was fifth at uh, White Lake Ultra Six Hour earlier this month. Um, Catherine Lavolsi, who was 13th at Chakura um, last year. Amelia Kerner, who was 14th at Chakura last year. Um, and then Lorena Duquette, um, who's uh, had a lot of strong results here uh, over the last decade. Um, so, yeah, one of the themes is there's a lot of returners, uh, of maybe not Chakura itself, but of White Mountain Endurance events, uh, which is awesome to see. Um, and yeah, if you, if you do well at the other ones, you're, you're likely gonna, uh, do well at Takura. Um, so yeah, that's sort of an overview of our, our women's field. I don't know if you have any thoughts you want to add to the mix, Jamil. No, I mean, we're, I guess we're kind of missing out on our top finishers last year, but it sounds like we've got some really exciting new faces popping up. Um, Caitlin is just such an interesting one to see how she can translate over and um and do out here so it sounds like she's got that trail run experience already and has already proven that so um yeah it's i think she was just a last minute addition this week so excited for that yeah you know if you're a last minute addition then you're probably feeling feeling good and feeling strong so that uh probably bodes well but yeah being uh you know, I don't know what her current, you know, ski run balance is, but I know that can sometimes be the tricky thing for skiers coming off of a, a big winter, um, trying to get their trail legs under them for the, the spring and summer. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely done it before. So, yeah, no, I'm not, uh, not expecting anything other than uh, some serious crushing from her this weekend. Sure. <laughs> um so yeah, that, that's our women's field. Uh, and on our men's side, we actually have quite a few returning uh, men from both the top 10. Um, and yeah, I'll dive right into that. Um, Travis Muhonen, who was second last year in a really exciting finish, uh, finished in 221, just two seconds back of our, our winner last year. Um, he was leading parts of the race. I think he led most of the climbs and uh, was leading going into the field at the end, but then he sort of cramped up and uh, let first place sneak by. So I'm sure he's looking, uh, looking for revenge this year and looking to take home the victory. Um, and then Michael Conley, who was third last year, um, he was eight minutes back of, of first and second in 229. Um, he's really I feel like well known for his uh, descending ability, and yeah, you don't want it. You don't want to be within striking range of, of Mike on the last downhill. Um, he also just uh, ran White Lake Ultra's twelve hour uh, earlier this month, um, and yeah, won that. And then he also won our Kilkenny Ridge race twenty five miler in twenty twenty two. Um, but really strong mountain runner. Uh, it was cool to see him at White Lakes because I feel like I hadn't maybe known him as well on the sort of flatter, flatter stuff. But um, yeah, clearly strong all around. And then Eric Brooks from Maine, he was seventh place last year. Um, he's been returning to this race almost every year, I think. Uh, I think this is his fifth, uh, fifth time. Um, and he's placed as high as third. Um, so yeah, a lot of familiarity with the course. Uh, and then Matthew Ridley, uh, from Massachusetts, he was 10th place last year, uh, as well as third at Kilkenny. Um, Scott Ugly, uh, he was 12th last year at, uh, here at Chakura. And then Brady Flute, who was 15th last year. Um, I think he's newer to the trail scene, uh, but yeah, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Steady State, one of our sponsors. They've been hosting Friday Hill runs uh, in Portland. And I know Brady's been putting in the work on the Friday Hills. Nice. So yeah, looking to turn some heads on, uh, on Saturday. Um, and then some other, other men to watch. Uh, quite a few, actually, other top contenders who are first-time runners uh, at the race. 
Um, well, not all first time, but most of them, this will be their first time here. So Nigel Bates, uh, he won the Kilkenny Ridge 25 miler last year. Um, and he's from Vermont, uh, has several FKTs to his name. It'll be fun to see what he does out there. Uh, Stephen Lang, who was ninth, uh, earlier this year at Breakneck, uh, which was part of the Golden Trail National Series. So really deep competition there. So I think, uh, yeah, he's in, he's in top condition to do well. Um, and then Jesse Young is uh, an interesting addition to the field. He was the USATF New England Trail Championship in 2022 at Merrimack River, uh, which is a much flatter, faster course. Um, he was also the USATF New England Cross Country Championship uh, winner in 2019, which is I think was at Franklin Park. So he has a lot of leg speed, but it will be interesting where his, his climbing legs are at. Um, and then Peter Bonito, um, this will be his first time at Chakura, but he's already committed to the whole, uh, the whole cup, which is really exciting to see. Um, so I'm sure he's got some, some big plans in the works for, for this season. Um, Justin Newman, who was eighth year back in 2022, um, and then Travis Lavin, who's joining us from Nevada, um, and he's gearing up for Broken Arrow as well as the Mammoth Trail Fest. Um, not sure what his experience is on New England terrain, um, but yeah, it'll be exciting to to have him out here as well. Could be a humbling um, experience, maybe. Yes. It could be, yeah, it could be, but probably a good uh, good tune up for something like Broken totally. Arrow. Um, and yeah, I'm sure there's some dark horses that I haven't mentioned. Um, so uh, yeah, there's always always people that uh, come through the woodwork and, and show up on race day with strong performances. So I'll be excited to see who those names are as well. Um, yeah, that's sort of a, a rundown on this year's field. Um, and the race kicks off at 8 a.m. Uh, on Saturday, June 1st, um, and we'll have uh, live tracking on the Air Viper uh, live website. Um, yeah, it's going to be an exciting weekend, Jamil. Yeah, no, that was a great breakdown, Patrick. I'm excited to hear all these awesome names like returners and some new faces as well, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. I know, yeah, in addition, like you can – definitely view the live results we'll have i think our plan is to have a couple live timing points um and we'll also have of course like the finish line times on there and then i know we'll also be trying to push out some coverage on our social media account as well um from a couple spots on course so follow definitely white mountain endurance on social media yeah awesome um yeah, well, that's sort of, I guess, the kickoff to uh, episode one of uh, of the pod. Um, not sure what we're naming this pod, but I guess White Mountain Endurance Podcast for now. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, some of the other sort of goals and, and visions for the pod, we'd love to feature both members of the White Mountain Endurance community, members of our racing team here in the Northeast, um, we'll likely be doing race previews for all of the events, as well as uh, potentially some some recaps of the events, uh, you know, interviews with participants and with, um, yeah, just people who helped uh, make the event happen. Um, I'd also love to dive into maybe some FKTs uh, here in the Whites. Just we've got a really strong FKT scene and culture. Um, so, yeah, I know there's a lot of... Uh, FKTs that are going to be in contention this summer around New England. So we'll maybe do a little bit of a dive into that. Um, and yeah, any other ideas you have for us, send them, send them our way. Um, but yeah, excited to help host this and uh, just, yeah, share more about all that uh, this region has to offer. Yeah, I love it. I think that's great. A great recap. And like Patrick said, let us know what you guys want to hear from this. And yeah, we hope this is a good intro, but we definitely want to involve more of the community, I think, as we as we get going, get some guests on here and just help help guide through the season and everything that's going on.
Awesome. Well, thanks, Jamil. And, yeah, I guess we'll uh, see you on the trail uh, this Saturday for those races. All right. Good luck. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>